All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Healthspan Academy. I'm your host, Craig Shearhart, and joining me today are my special guests, Dr. Andrew Thompson and Dr. Steph Romero, who are both chiropractors. Um, they actually met during their undergrad at Wilfrid Laurier University, both in kinesiology and then went on to CMCC to get their uh, chiropractic degrees. And just this past spring, they've had the, the joy of opening a business during the pandemic. So we'll talk about how that's gone. Uh, their core principles kind of in Cairo um, and, and a few other fun topics. Guys, thanks for, for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. We're excited. Awesome. Cool. I want to start with your sort of core Cairo philosophy. I know there's different streams you can kind of go. There's like modalities, there's like manual therapy, there's a bit of both, kind of a hybrid. How would you guys describe your core philosophy of, of how, you, how you practice? Yeah, I think um, kind of what you said between like manual therapy modalities, things like that. And our general approach or our philosophy, I guess, would be we follow an evidence based model. So we take mm -hmm. you picture like a three circled Venn diagram. There's like the current evidence, current research, personal experience. So that'd be our like practitioner experience and then the patient preference. So we take all those three, we combine them. And then based on whatever the complaint is, the condition, that will guide our management, whether it's more focused on manual therapy, whether it's focused more on education, whether it's focused more on different modalities or rehab kind of implementation into their, their daily lives. And that's kind of, that's kind of across the board. Um, the, the, the interactions and the, the sessions will change based on the person to person because all those variables will change. So right. it's, um, it's an ever evolving uh, it's an ever evolving approach and, but that's how we like it because we don't want to be stuck in one way. We want to be open to, to new ideas and, and, uh, new evidence and let that guide us. Yeah. And for us, I think too, a big thing to incorporate, you said is education, mm -hmm. um, really giving our, our clients, our patients, the tools to create long-term long lasting results as well. Right. That's yeah. I mean, I guess like there's still those people who kind of think of the therapy as like a band aid, and they think like once they leave, like that's the end of their their journey, right? And mm -hmm. uh, and then they wonder why they're not getting better. So you yeah. kind of have to meet them where they're at and give them just those kind of little pieces, kind of moving forward. So they're um, they're sort of getting the best benefit from what you guys are doing while you see them. Um, cool. Talk about that client, the ideal client experience. So um, from that cold call, they've made a call to your clinic or an email or whatever. What is what is the ideal client experience that you guys are are designing or putting together for them? Yeah, so for us, a really big thing that we wanted to create, having our own space, is a place where everybody feels welcome, mm -hmm. a place where you know you come in, you feel comfortable seeing the people that you are coming to see, um, and really just being an overall trusted partner in their overall health care. Right. what we're trying to create and then working with with other practitioners on our team as well being a space where um we collaborate and have have their best interest in mind with all that we do awesome yeah i like to use the word partner because i think that's uh i like to think of my therapist as like my kind of advisory committee uh so like they're kind of working with my my old age and my joints and stuff and helping me solve it myself um i like that yeah. and i guess that's part of my next kind of topic I was going to bring up is building trust. And I guess that's a big part of it, right? They, in order for them to, to trust you, they've got, you have to basically understand where they're at, whether they're just getting off the couch and haven't done anything physical in the last five years, or whether they're super active or competitive athlete. And, um, you kind of have to get it no matter where, where their head's at. Right. Is that, is that one of the challenges you guys run into? Yeah. So, and, and trust is, it's a major aspect of what we're looking to gain with, with the people that we work with. Um, and a lot of that comes down to communication with them, right. like having them come in, taking that, the time initially to have to get a thorough intake of what their current complaints are, what their current kind of pain levels are, but also what their, any relevant health history that they've had in the past or any other family history that all that stuff can kind of culminate and contribute to what's going on in the, in the moment, mm -hmm. a lot of communication with them and, an education on, you know, this, what may be causing something or what is directly causing something and right. slowly progressing them, um, through different various modalities, various kind of movement and rehab stuff to improve their quality of life overall. And the trust also comes back to 
us being humble and understanding if someone comes in, if it's something that's maybe outside of our scope or something a little bit out of our wheelhouse, how can we work with them to find somebody who might be better suited, whether it's right. another chiropractor, whether it's another discipline or practitioner, things like that. Yeah. And people really appreciate that, not um, feeling that they come here and that they're going to be like stuck having to see us. Uh-huh. Let's find who you can work with to get the best benefit for what you're experiencing. Right. I love Definitely. that. Yeah, I think, um, and I, I've kind of gotten that vibe, even just kind of reaching out to small business owners and giving us a bit of a break when we're stressed out because we kind of get forgotten about, right? As, as business owners. And uh, this is, it's been tough on on kind of small business owners in the pandemic and stuff like that and building trust. Um, one of the things you talked about was um, one of the things, the root issue. And I think that's something that a lot of times you'll see a light bulb go off when they come in for a symptom, but they realize the symptom is not the problem. It's just something else is going on. Um, how much of that is kind of a part of your client education when you're working with people? Oh, I think it's huge. And having those longer intakes, it really gives us a better understanding of who they are, what they're doing day to day and mm-hmm. um, finding the pockets of, of change that we can make so that um, if something's contributing to what it is that they're experiencing, showing them and explaining to them why and how this affects it and what we're doing and how that is going to help them benefit um, moving mm-hmm. forward. Yeah. And sometimes people can be a little bit skeptical, like that we may be working on an area of the body or focusing on an area of the body. That's not exactly where their complaint is, Mm -hmm. but it's fun to, once you get a little bit of improvement, a little bit of good outcome there. And that kind of light bulb goes off, that becomes very rewarding and very fun to, to see that them go through that experience. It's like, Oh, it's not just exactly where my pain is. There's other things contributing to it. So that's a lot of fun. Yeah. I love that. I've had tons of light bulbs go off and, and Kyra were like, wait a minute, you worked on my hips to fix my Achilles and uh, yeah, bam, <laughs> who knew? Um, but it's obviously all connected uh, through like, you know, neurological, lymphatic, cardiovascular sometimes it's all, it's all linked together. I love that. Um, yeah. Let's talk about some of the most preventable issues you guys see. Like what, what is something that you guys see regularly? You're like, man, if you guys were just doing this, <laughs> you wouldn't, you wouldn't be dealing with this. What, what's, is it, do you see like a lot more low back kind of hip issues? What are the, the most prevalent things you guys think could, could be preventable from what you're seeing clinically? The, I'd say in general, it, it can be very difficult to uh, prevent injuries or say like right. do to prevent um, a specific injury from happening because mm-hmm. there's so many variables that mm-hmm. go on. Uh, so many things that we do in our life that can be unpredictable. For example, I don't know if I'm going to slip off a curb and roll my ankle or sure. things like that, but yeah. that we, that can be, that we can control to an extent and help to prevent would be things like repetitive strain injuries based mm-hmm. on what, for example, what you do for work or what you're doing in your day-to-day activities and uh, hobbies and things like that. Mm-hmm. I say the repetitive strains like shoulders, low back hips, things like that. Mm-hmm. And it'll always come back to our intake of what are you doing in your day today? Right. And what are you doing to supplement that? So if you're working, sitting at your desk all day, okay, what are you doing throughout the day to get up and get a little bit of movement breaks through there so that you're not stagnant in that seated position for the whole day or, and, and what right. strategies right. can we implement? Um, and it's not crazy stuff. It's things that can take anywhere between like two to 10 minutes a day of, of little kind of things to mm-hmm. To get a little bit um, more movement, a little bit more activation that can, can help prevent the things that we know we're putting our bodies through on a daily basis. Right. Um, yeah. So you kind of, you mentioned the, the little things that take five, 10 minutes a day. And I think that's super important for getting those kind of small wins and building momentum. Um, is there a way that you frame that? Like, how do you make that more palatable to people getting started when it goes from that kind of this black box of, I had no idea what's wrong with me. To like, oh, if you just do this, like, uh, is that is that something you consciously chunk down into smaller tasks for people, or how do you tend to to educate people to get them started? Yeah, I, I think it comes down to understanding like what where they're at, mm-hmm. um, and then trying to create attainable goals so that right. you're setting them up for success. And um, for example, I have a new mom; she doesn't have a whole lot of time to herself in the day. So we're working on creating just a five, 10 minute mobility um, routine that she can incorporate prior to um, her feeding schedule. So just trying to find the habits or, or the habits that are existing and then mm. 
uh, pairing that up with, with something to, to create positive change. Just a way to like build it into their day instead of adding something new. It's just something that's just kind of, they can sort of almost multitask at times sort of thing. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Cool. I, I want to shift gears a little bit into your, your social media stuff. Cause that's been like super, that's how kind of how I bumped into you guys was through yeah. social media and you're doing an amazing job with that. Where does, where does the, the inspiration in social, have you guys always been active in social media kind of prior to opening a business or where does your, where do you kind of, where did that all begin? No, honestly, I, we're both fairly inexperienced with social media. Hmm. Um, it's just something that kind of landed for us and we're like, okay, we're going to keep rolling with this. It seems to be working. Um, and just figuring it out as we go, which it has been fun. Um, it definitely wasn't in our initial plans when we were opening or to use it as to the extent that we have been. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's been cool to see it, uh, to kind of see how it, how it's played out. Yeah. And I've, I even less so than staff have any experience with social media. So <laughs> yeah, it's been quite the, quite the learning curve for me. And I think our main inspiration for the social media comes to with, I mean, our, our main channel that we will use is Instagram and understanding yeah. that Instagram has this potential global reach, mm -hmm. but how can we take that and focus that more into our immediate community? Cause right. those are the people that we're serving. Yeah. We're very, we try to be very conscious in, in any, communication or any posts that we put out that we always want that to tie back into, we want to communicate directly to the people that we're serving, the people that we're working with. Right. And, um, so far it's, 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 we're very happy with, with how it's gone. It's still a lot to learn and a lot to, to go through, but I'd say it's, it's fun more than it's frustrating. So <laughs> yeah, it's a nice yeah. Little, little break. You need those fun moments, like, especially when we're in a pandemic. I feel like that's like a, a TikTok page waiting to happen. I feel like a couple of those videos could just go yeah. go viral. Don't <laughs> we don't need to we don't need to throw any more social media channels into our right now. Got enough on the plate as is. That's yeah. totally fair. Yeah. Yeah. But awesome. it was kind of, it was a happy pivot that came out of the pandemic, I guess, because we initially our plans were to really get into the community physically to introduce mm -hmm. ourselves, to get involved, to do to to do that to to um, market our, our, our business, I guess you could say mm -hmm. and to pivot to what we could use. And that was social media. Oh. Yeah. I love it too. Cause it's just like, it's, it's really non-threatening cause it is kind of fun and just seeing you guys up there dancing. Like it's, you don't, <laughs> you don't see that often from like, you know, quote, yeah. like the professionals kind of therapist stuff. So, uh, yeah, I, I love that. And I think if you start building trust, sometimes you can start building that trust even before you see people, that kind of stuff. Cause it, like I said, it's just, it's so non-threatening and kind of like, it's like an easy entry. You're like, Oh, these are the people I saw dancing <laughs> on the Instagram. All exactly, of a sudden you're recognizable, yeah. right? Yeah. So, we try uh, to add, um, <laughs> that kind of humanized aspect to it and yeah. balancing the professional and just like the personal, like we're, we're all people, like we're gonna, we want people to know that or easygoing, approachable yeah, and fun. And we, we do like to have fun and incorporate that in everything we do. So, yeah. and that's something you can't just tell people like, like Kawhi, <laughs> I'm a fun guy. Yeah, I'm a fun guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're demonstrating it. So it's like, actually the context <laughs> is, is there to begin with. I love that. Um, what were, what have been the most unexpected challenges for you guys opening in a pandemic? What's some of the stuff you didn't think of that you kind of had to, that's been sort of a pain or a challenge you guys had to work your way through? Yeah. See this, this question stuff, we get this often, um, but because we opened during the pandemic, we really have nothing to compare it to like right. to see like what, what really shifted or changed mm -hmm. for our business. Um, the biggest thing I think leading up to it, so we graduated last year, 2020. So mm -hmm. the biggest thing for us was um, we initially actually wanted to open in September, but our timeline with schooling and our, our licensing exams, those all got pushed back a couple of months. So then we right. were kind of in a in a few months of of limbo of like, when is this going to happen? We don't really know what our, our, our end date is here. So that was something we had to deal with. But coming to open, I don't know. Yeah, I think overall, like there was obviously all those challenges of really navigating the whole pandemic and are we going to be able to open now? What's that going to look like? How are things going to go? But then mm -hmm. they, I think all of that time that we were kind of not sure was going on gave us that opportunity to plan things out a little bit more and be a little bit more 
prepared um, as to what our space and what our approach or our team was going to look like. Right. And I think overall, what we've created in the space and our culture and our values, I think we're better off how things are now than what things would have looked like if we did open um, when we originally planned to in uh, in like the fall of 2020. So, yeah. So little yeah. small little consolations. It's kind of, well, it's forced me to start a podcast and uh, <laughs> and a YouTube channel and stuff. So it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's been annoying obviously, but yeah, it's, you, there's things that you wouldn't have been motivated to do otherwise. Right. Exactly. Uh, and yeah. up in those dance skills has got to be on that list too. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the dynamic. Um, I can relate to you guys, you know, having a, a partnership, personal and professional kind of at the same time, has that been a challenge? And do you guys set barriers and conversations like how does a conversation not become business 24 or 7 do you, do you guys have hard rules um how has that dynamic worked out <laughs> um we tried to set the hard rules from time to time and yeah. we'll do that kind of those kind of slip away but it's yeah. it's a it's an ever-evolving kind of process of figuring out what works best for us and and mm-hmm. our what works best um the we're fairly new to this i'd say we've been over in business for about seven months or so. So it's, there's still a lot to learn, but yeah. we're slowly, slowly, but surely kind of finding that, that balance. Yeah. Like we definitely, we see each other pretty much 24 <laughs> seven. So I think for us, like personally, we're working on in terms of like challenges, opening a business um, is finding those avenues or those things that are, are just for us and, mm-hmm. and finding those things that, um, that in that time that, we can recharge or like do the things that light us up without like, you know, having to, to be around each other really, yeah. really helps us to, yeah. to get through it together. Um, but like in terms of running the business, like we try to meet every Monday for like a weekly alignment of what's coming up for the week, what's coming mm-hmm. up for the month and just reviewing what, what's, what's on our plates just to help keep us um, on task and focus. Nice. Um, yeah. Still working on the the boundaries part of when we're working and when we're not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It'll, I'm sure it'll work itself out. We just found like we're out on a patio at bread bar and the whole conversation is about, well, what are we going to do about our staff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's How hard. about we just enjoy yeah. this food that's in front of us? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I love that. Um, so yeah. And we do something similar. Actually, we do like a weekly check-in on the business and also a weekly check-in on the relationship. So it's kind of like, separate a little bit. So it lets us like figure out like, are we getting our needs met professionally and kind of personally? And then that's going to work well for us. And, um, cause it is tough. Otherwise it's, it's, it all blends together, you know, especially in a pandemic when you can't go out and do fun stuff. And, but that, that me times at a premium right now, <laughs> my day has been away with her sisters a couple of days and like, it's just me and Kilo. It's like, <laughs> gotta relish those moments when you can. Um, yeah. I want to circle back to your personal habits and you guys are both super active in, in fitness classes and stuff. And, and it's easy. I think when you're running a business to kind of get lost and there's, it's, you can kind of get pulled in a lot of different directions in terms of where your priority is at with nutrition and conditioning and strength and mental health and mobility, the whole bit. I want to know what we'll start maybe with you, Andrew, where your priorities at with that list and what do your habits look like around that right now? Um, that's well, I'd say that probably is another unexpected challenge that we maybe have experienced is really finding that time to, and prioritizing that time for whether it's grocery shopping and meal prepping for better meals and finding that time to exercise. At first it was, Oh, we have a little bit of space here. Like I'll just, I'll, if I need to, I'll just work out here in our, in our room at the front and it worked for about a month. And then yeah. after, <laughs> no, that's not going to work. Yeah. Uh, it is, it is getting better. Like I do try to, um, focus less on like concrete, like hard, uh, like programming when it comes to training, things like that. And just, just finding, uh, 30 minutes or 45 minutes a day, just to move in some respect, whether that's yeah. getting out for a walk, going for a run, doing a workout, um, uh, just moving around, lifting, throwing some kettlebells around something like that, something to get my heart rate up and get some, uh, some endorphins flowing and feeling a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Um, that routine is starting to find itself a little bit more. Nice. But, uh, it's, it's certainly, um, it's, it's too bad that I'm surprised that we're, we're having that challenge, but, um, I think the most important part is recognizing, okay, yeah, we fell off the wagon a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, 
let's that it is what it is. Let's move on and find my training tree is not going to look like it was when I was in my undergrad or at CNCC. How can I find what works best for me now? So right. we're, get, we're getting there and I wish I had a, a better um, answer for you on what exactly <laughs> that, that list looks like. But um, no, that's yeah. all right. That's that, that is a very acceptable answer, especially in, a, in the pandemic. It's like, oh, I do this sometimes, and this sometimes. It's like it's kind of the universal thing. It's like nobody's like, I've got this routine. I'm working out every day. I'm doing mobility every day. I'm eating perfectly. It's like, and I think that's like something that not everyone understands. When you're a coach or you know a health professional, like you don't have everything figured out, but you you just keep moving forward. So um, I can totally, I, I feel you, man. Uh, Steph, how about you? Yeah, no, I think, yeah, it's a very honest answer. And um, it's something that we take into knowing this into our practice and setting our expectations for the people we work with as well. Like it it definitely humbles us and and keeps us, um, it just, yeah, I think creating more realistic goals for people as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, for me, like, as Andrew said, we were really like gung ho the first few months of the business. Like we're here like eight to eight, we really didn't carve out that time for any movement or um, things outside of the business. So definitely, as you said, fell off the wagon with with personal fitness and personal like nutrition. Um, but I think one thing that we haven't sacrificed is sleep. We really nice. value sleep. So 10, 10, 30 in bed, like non-negotiable for us to 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 be able to, to wake up the next day ready to go. Um, from what I've learned is that I need to specifically carve out time for my own fitness movement, whatever it looks like. And so learning as we go. And so I've, I'm getting back to my roots. I've registered for adult dance classes. That'll be starting uh, next month. And then also playing in the women's soccer league. So just really having those already carved out so that there's no excuse to, to skip out on it, having that accountability of being on a team. Um, so really trying to prioritize myself in that way. Cause I, we've experienced that, um, a bit of a phase where we weren't moving, we weren't doing the things that we know are beneficial to our health. And we, we, we felt that mentally and physically it showing up, it was difficult to, to be fully present for the business or yeah. difficult in our relationship. Like we were a little bit more, um, agitated with each other because yeah. we weren't doing the things that we needed to, to be, to be present and to be, um, yeah, just to be there in, in our best self. So really yeah. seeing that, you know, you have to go through that to, to really, uh, appreciate the, the positive benefits of, mm-hmm. of, um, prioritizing yourself. So one thing you have to go through to learn, but I think we've gone through that and are making better changes for that. That's awesome. And it, and it makes it real. Like it's, I, I've, I've gone through those waves. Everybody has, right. It's, but yeah. especially those first couple of years where you're just grinding, you're just putting your head down, you're also excited. And it's just like, it's so hard to turn that part off and set right. it aside your time and prioritize. But I, from what I can tell you guys are doing a great job. Um, and, uh, the feedback obviously has been great. Everybody I know that's gone to see you guys is, is enjoyed it and the environment and you're crushing it in social media. Um, this has been an awesome chat guys, and hopefully we can do this again sometime. Maybe when, uh, when we are out of a pandemic and the <laughs> in a little, yeah, little better yeah. place. And, um, um, so I appreciate your time guys. And, uh, and yeah, like I said, hopefully we can do this again sometime. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks for having us, Craig. All right. Well, thanks for joining us today, guys on HealthSpan Academy and we'll see you next time.